right. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Ricardo Rodriguez. I'm the assistant curator at the Baseball Heritage Museum. And I'm here with Jeremy Swick, the historian and curator for the Chick-fil-A College Football Hall of Fame. And uh, Jeremy's been kind enough to uh, meet up today and uh, tell us a little bit about his position at the College Football Hall of Fame. And um, so, so Jeremy, uh, why don't you uh, start off and uh, tell us a little bit how how this whole COVID-19 situation has uh, impacted the Chick-fil-A College Football Hall of Fame um, and uh, you know, how it looks and addresses its virtual, virtual uh, interaction and social media presence. Yeah, Ricardo, first of all, I appreciate you for having me on. Uh, also, I mean, really going with the entire COVID-19, it's really made us shift the way we present, uh, especially on social media. As you know, uh, I've been going live a lot more through the archives when I am coming into work, uh, but also just trying to find ways to make sure we stay engaged with our fans, even though they can't physically come into the building just yet. Uh, really just trying to create that even a bigger digital presence. Great, yeah, speaking of your, uh, your online, um, like behind, this, uh, behind the scenes uh, live streams you've been doing, I saw earlier today you had, uh, Baker Mayfield's cleats. Um, can you tell us a little bit how you go about getting some of your artifacts, um, the process behind it? Or do you go hunt those things down yourself? Are they donated by uh, players or, uh, you know, just individuals? Yeah, absolutely. I had to always have to show a little love to Cleveland. I lived in Akron for a little while uh, while I was working at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But with that, we actually, it's a little bit of a combination. We go out and reach out to players, especially past players. Uh, when they're inducted into the Hall of Fame, we definitely reach out to those players, but also the sports information directors. They do an amazing job. Uh, really, if they think something's coming up, sometimes they'll reach out to us and let us know, hey, we have these cleats, or hey, these, these are on their way. Uh, but also through the, through the schools, uh, even actually even through the bowl sometimes. So if it's a big bowl record, I might reach out to the people at the con bowl and say, hey, can you say, can you say anything you find interesting? Is there anything that you keep an eye out uh, personally, just as a personal, uh, you know, checklist or interest for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely keep my eye out to eBay just to see what is out there. Um, heritage auctions as well. Just you never know what people come with or find in their basement or at estate sales. Uh, that's actually one of the guys, he gave us a program. He donated a program from 1874. It's the fourth oldest known program. Uh, Mr. Ellis, uh, he, it was a, it's an amazing piece. It's really interesting. And I wish I had it with me. Uh, when you open up the, open up the paper, instead of having like a roster, as you might expect, it was a roster, but it actually had what, class they were taking. So if they were in the school of law or if they were doctors or undergrads. So I thought it was really gave back to the, the student athlete idea. Yeah. And that's something that you don't, uh, it's kind of uh, removed nowadays. Um, it's athlete first student, student next, if anything. Um, next, like what are, um, what are some curatorial challenges that you, that are unique that you consider unique to your position? at the Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I think a, one of the most unique challenges I have is trying to collect everything, but also not collect everything with almost, what, 775 schools, because we represent everyone from Division 1A to NAIA, trying to figure out what to collect and how to navigate that. Obviously, I can't take a helmet from every school, even though we do have every helmet on display. Um, it's really just trying to decide what I want to try to add to our collection. So kind of stemming off that, how do you feel that your curatorial responsibilities and your uh, historian background impact, make, a, uh, make an impact on history overall? Yeah, absolutely. One of the biggest things we like to pride ourselves at the Hall of Fame is we're storytellers more than anything. We really get to share that, that story 
It's more than just the down and distance. It's the story behind the story. Maybe what was going on the night before, if we know, or what we were going on, what was going on after the game or at a halftime speech. I'm really just trying to pull out those stories and try to find interesting ways to engage a wide variety of audience. Uh, speaking of curating those stories, can you tell us about the uh, first exhibit that you were part of creating or curating? Yeah, absolutely. My first exhibit here was actually for the Super Bowl that was in Atlanta. So there was no pressure there. But <laughs> uh, once, I, once I dove into that, because when I, when I first arrived, the nest the exhibit had already been kind of completed. It was for our 2018 incoming class. More than anything, I just worked on some of the copy, but it really wasn't genuinely my, my own idea. Uh, but with the Super Bowl, uh, obviously with in partnership with our amazing team. It was something that I really got to put my name on. Uh, it went through the decades talking about different Super Bowl players and a bunch of different Super Bowl stories as well. Um, so what, uh, do, you, do you have a favorite, favorite, favorite artifact or object in, in the collection? I know you're a big bobblehead fan, um, but do you have uh, something um, like a prize bobblehead in your collection, your personal collection, or do you have something in the uh, the Hall of Fame collection that you just uh, just really love and love to see or love to exhibit? Yeah, one of the things I really love to show people who come back there is it's a football signed by FDR in a, in November of 1933, so it was his first year in office. It was to honor, well, it was a celebration football to the different military games that were going on. Uh, ours is from, I believe, the West Coast Navy and the San Diego Marines. Interestingly enough, the game was in December, not November. So I started being curious, okay, why is this ball signed in November, but the game happened in December? Well, FDR knew he wouldn't, was not going to be able to get to all the games that were going on, so he pre-signed the balls. I reached out to the FDR library, and they kind of confirmed what I had kind of thought that he had pre-signed a whole bunch of balls, but it was exciting because it's his actual autograph. It's not stamped. It was, it was him signing those balls to give to the troops. Fascinating. Fascinating. So there we got a little, a little peek into your uh, historian background. Um, can you tell us how, how you were inspired or turned on to become a historian and then subsequently, a, or some more, I should say, supportingly a, a, a curator for the, uh, College Football Hall of Fame? Yeah, absolutely. I've realized that I've just always had a love for history. It's just been, it was the one class I was really good at in school, which I, I always laugh back at him. Didn't try as hard as I probably could, but I always tried in history. I just found it interesting. It made sense to me. Um, my background's actually in education. Uh, before that, or before this, I, w I was in edu education. I went to grad school at the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. And for my undergrad and my master's, and that really just kind of ignited my love for history. I honestly just started taking classes that were history classes because I'm like, oh, they're, they're kind of interesting. It was funny, by my sophomore, junior year, my, my, my uh, professor kind of talked to me, my, my advisor talked to me, and she's like, you know, most of your classes have been history. You probably should try to look into maybe, you know, doing something doing something with that. I had never really thought about it. Ended up going into education. And then I realized that there was, there was more I wanted to do. I loved being in the classroom, but I also loved just sharing history as well. Do you have any other curatorial interests other than sport? Yeah, actually, uh, my first internship out of grad school, it was at a historic photography museum uh, in the Wisconsin Dells, H.H. Bennett Studio. Um, it was just amazing to see how clear the images were from cameras that were in the 1860s. Uh, it's a really inter a interesting piece of that is since it's organic material, you can blow these images up as large as you want and it won't pixelate because there are no pixels. Uh, so that, I mean, I think that just added to my, uh, my belief that I just kind of love history. So obviously no matter where I'm going to be, I have been able to find interest in in history, even if it's not always sports. That's great. So uh, just real quick, going back to this uh, whole COVID-19 thing, can you, how has this impacted your responsibilities and um, how do you see it uh, 
impacting them in the in the in the, the near to short term short term to the long future. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. It's definitely been something different. Obviously, I can't take the artifacts home to work with. So a lot of my my responsibilities have kind of shifted to more of the back end, entering metadata into our collection system. When I am in the office, what I like to do is I like to take pictures, collection photos, because then right now I'm working on jerseys, for example. If I take quality photos, which I try to do, I can then use those photos back home to enter more of the data into our system. And so that kind of works really hand in hand, but it's definitely, it's definitely a challenge when, I, when I'm working on, let's say, an upcoming exhibit. I can't really walk there and go and plan out how I, how I typically do. So I think it's really adjusting, but I'm thankful for having a web-based system that I am able to access from anywhere. What kind of equipment do you use uh, as far as taking your pictures? Right now, I've started, uh, when time allows, I'll use our camera, but I usually just use my phone. Uh, those usually take good enough images for what I'm looking for. And then I have them as well because I can just send them to my my Dropbox and they're right there. Now, do you get involved in, in mount making at all for uh, you know some of your, ob your objects or your artifacts? Uh, not typically. We don't really mount a whole lot. We do have some cases that we use. Uh, one interesting part about our museum, we host about 280 or so events a year. So a lot of our cases are mobile, which presents its own own unique set of challenges, but it also is one of those where it can be moved, let's say, for the temporary space. They're having a big event there. All the cases can move, be moved out. I saw the exhibit you set up in Miami, I think it was. Um, that was that was pretty interesting and pretty nice. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to – okay, so I've done a couple exhibits, one for the NFL draft uh, in uh, Nashville last year, and we kind of mixed that college and football atmosphere, of course, highlighting guys who had played college ball, and we were in Tennessee, so we talked about the Titans a lot, but – Last year, I was in New Orleans for the national championship. And again, just really highlight not only LSU, but also the local schools from New Orleans, Tulane, and schools like that. And so that, I mean, that's a really another fun way to really just share our story with people who might not come to the Hall of Fame all the time. I remember two years ago, we were out in San Jose, and a lot of those people had never been to Atlanta to begin with. So it was cool to share that story, those stories with them as well. Are you working on anything for the NFL draft this year and looking at it differently since they're going to be um, still still holding the draft but just not having anything live? That's still up in the air. Me and actually the curator at the Pro Football Hall of Fame have been bouncing ideas off each other kind of the last couple of weeks trying to see how we might be able to incorporate our artifacts and their artifacts and the NFL as a whole, I think it's a it's a new territory. Not everyone really sure which which way we're going to go with it. Well, Jeremy, I think you have a great opportunity to uh, you know make a mark here and do something pretty creative and uh, impactful, and that'll uh, really leave a good impression on uh, the people who get to enjoy it. Uh, wrapping up here, you got any final words or uh, words of inspiration, any tips or tricks for someone who would be interested in becoming a uh, sports historian or a sports curator? Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking about this a lot. Uh, one of the biggest things and something I preach pretty often, it's trust the process. And what I mean by that is it's going to be tough. And I'm not even talking about, obviously, when you're in grad school, anyone who's written a master's thesis Mine's 120 pages and right now it kind of collects dust. I'm hoping to use it in an exhibit someday, but uh, really just working through it. There's going to be long times, long nights, but just continuing along the process, uh, being willing to at times up and move. I've lived in four different states, all chasing, chasing this goal. And I think it's really just believing in yourself because from my own experience, there's a lot of people look at you kind of crazy. You're like, oh, you want to talk about sports history? Uh, does that pay? I'm like, I'm going to make it pay. So it's, it's really one of those things. It's just uh, trusting your own instinct 
and really just another big thing I'd recommend is networking. Get with as many people as you can. I mean, that's how we ended up getting to know each other. It's, that's right. it's all networking as well. So that, those, are, those would be my tips. That's great. Trust the process. Great, Jeremy. Uh, again, Jeremy Swick, uh, historian and curator for the Chick-fil-A College Football Hall of Fame. We appreciate your time. It's been a very, very uh, pleasurable uh, talking to you, and I look forward to hanging out with you some other time. Thank you.